Cool FM, smoothest place on your radio dial. Uh, the time right now is uh, 8.21. Uh, and uh, all be well with everybody. Good, uh, good morning, Dr. Computer. Alex, Alex. Good morning, Jerry. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. I That's have, great to hear. I have done your clicky for recording thing. Thank you so much. You've got, you've got a man behind you with mittens on. Yes, he's... Uh, He's saying something about this This whole show could have been an email, but I don't know what he means by that. <laughs> have an expression, twice mitten, once shy. <laughs> Never mind. Also um, true. Let me, uh, yeah. anyway, firstly, how you been? Pretty well, considering, I mean, all the crazy stuff that's been going on lately. Uh, it's uh, It's been an interesting couple of days, and I think you can say that pretty much about the past year or so. I mean, uh, we haven't almost uh, gotten over march and it's almost march again so <laughs> and nothing, what can i tell you it did, nothing seems to have changed it seems like the same mark doesn't it yeah, yeah it's it's weird except there's uh i would say some sort of a uh an air of hope that we didn't have uh, a couple of months ago uh where with uh treatments and vaccines and and uh and all that i think i think there's hope so Hopefully, uh, 2021 will be a year where we'll start rebuilding a lot of the stuff that uh, needs to be rebuilt, and maybe we'll make better decisions going forward. And uh, that includes well, I hope we technology. Learn something. Exactly. I hope we learn something. And uh, tell you what, now today just happens. I mentioned here today just happens to be sort of International uh, Data Privacy Day today. <laughs> That is correct. It's uh, initiated. It was initiated uh, by the Council of Europe. Uh, I think it was 28 January 1981. It was when they signed the Convention for the Protection of Individuals with regard to automatic processing of personal data. So that was one of the first binding international agreements that have to do with privacy on the internet and in networks and how they keep your data and so on. I mean, we have to remember it was 1981, even though the mm. internet had, uh, you know, pretty much a more than a decade uh, of existing, the web as we know it had yet to be invented. But still, even then, banks and uh, financial institutions and governments and some companies such as, you know, uh, telephone providers and uh, and such, had a lot of information about you, and sometimes they would not use it responsibly. So the Council of Europe was, uh, uh, they, they signed this on, on January 28, 1981, and it's the, the convention that right now is being updated for all the new legal challenges that have to do with all the development from then to now. There's also the Convention on Cybercrime. There's the uh, European Convention on, on Human Rights and so on. There's a whole bunch of legislation in Europe that I think, uh, at least here in Panama, we have a lot to learn from. There is a, a law that starts going into effect on March 29, which gives uh, people in Panama a lot of protection against a lot of what's going on right now. And one of the things that, uh, for example, is going on is... Uh, data is being misused by a lot of uh, places. I mean, you for one probably receive like every other week a new email from a certain bank saying, hey, here's our loans mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And for example, with this bank um, that I'm, I'm thinking about right now, even though I've told them like five or six times just this year to stop emailing me with loans and whatever that I, I'm not in the in the market for, they continue to uh, send me email and whatever. So what I've set up is a rule that every email that comes from them gets reported automatically to spam cop and other organizations. So the more they email me, mm. the more their email characteristics, such as their signature, the name of the bank, the domain name for the bank and so on, gets added more and more to this weighted database of spam. And in that sense, um, the more they spam me, the more they will get filtered by spam filters, even if it's, if, if it's legitimate email. So it's in their best e interest to stop spamming me. And this, this goes to pretty much everybody else who tries to spam me or any of my customers. Is it, is it a bank that you have uh, dealings with or is it? Uh, Not at all. No. Last, uh, yeah. Last time I dealt with that bank. 
Yeah, there's there's no relation. I mean, last time I dealt mm. with that bank was over a decade ago when I asked about their, uh, you know, their mortgages and whatever. And that was over a decade ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's no reason for them to be email me, e emailing me for any reason whatsoever. And I've told them, I mean, if, if I hadn't told them, I would understand. But I have told them, take me off your list. Don't do this. But the worst of the worst, I think, is uh, I, I, I was talking to the former director of the Authority for Innovation. He just recently retired, and mm -hmm. uh, he filed his papers for Seguro he, Social and everything he retired, else. He retired or he unsubscribed? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, it wasn't even a week after he filed his papers for Seguro Social, where he started receiving all these uh, phone calls at every hour of the day, offering him loans. And... <laughs> um, Loans he doesn't need, fortunately, but I mean every single day and multiple times and so on. So isn't, definitely, isn't this the logic though? I mean, hey, he's retiring; he's not going to have an income. Hey, let's get him to take out a loan. Yeah, that sounds like sound financial advice. <laughs> um, yeah, that like that hasn't had a problem before. So the thing is, they they call him up and whatever, and the number that he gave them was his personal phone number. That's not because it's the Social Security Administration. You're supposed right. to give them your. But now it's in the hands of banks and whatever that didn't have it before. So there's definitely some data theft going on uh, somewhere. And uh, that has to stop. And the only way to stop it is to give authorities better tools, better tools to investigate the crime and also better laws to actually punish the crime. There's one guy who sells databases and he's continually you know trying to uh, sell them and he he boasts about how updated they are and so on and so forth i know for a fact they're not in the fact in the, the because of uh, something that i also do uh, it's called a, a honey pot or a spam trap what you do is you buy up old domain names of companies that no longer exist and then you set them to receive any and all email and just send it to the spam detection engines for all the antivirus, anti-spam companies and so on. So every time you send something using one of those purchased lists, you are risking that your legitimate mail will be marked as spam. I get a lot of, uh, uh, of, of people coming to me saying, hey, you know, all my email is being marked as spam. And I said, well, did you ever use one of these uh, purchased lists to send out stuff? And inevitably, most of them say, yeah, I tried that. It didn't work at all. I sent out 8 million emails and I didn't get one customer. And I wonder why. I mean, you get these lists that say, oh, it's a list of executives with their positions and such and whatever. And a lot of the times the emails either don't work or they're fake or they're like for eight-year-olds who have email uh, accounts because YouTube kids needed an email account or something like that. And their parent refused to use their own uh, you know, uh, account just not to give Google more information already. So, Would that, would that work, mm -hmm. Alex, then? Because... The EU seems to have the, uh, you know, pretty much what seems to me anyway, some of the, the strongest privacy um, rules out now. For instance, we've just seen the uh, issue with WhatsApp saying that, by the way, with effect from such and such a date, which they've moved back till May now, if you don't agree to our privacy policy, then you're going to have to leave the platform. One place they cannot do that is Europe. So why are we all not following the example that Europe is putting forward. And also, the other thing I was, is because it's in today's news, I'll read it here. Apple Inc. said on Thursday that the new privacy pop up notifications will start appearing on most iPhones as soon as early spring, a, re a requirement that major digital advertising firms such as Facebook Inc. have warned will harm their business. Oh, poor things. Shame, isn't it? Yes. Let's start a Kickstarter to, you know, get some funds for poor Mark. I mean, he probably won't make his mortgage next September. He's, become, he, he's gone from apparently reading some articles the other day from somebody who was sort of highly regarded at to probably the most hated figure in the world right now. Yeah. I just hope people hate him for the right reasons in the sense mm -hmm. that, um, you know, uh, you, you, I see a lot of misinformation about how data is misused and whatever. And 
It's one of those things. I mean, you've, you've been in the broadcast business for some time, and you know how sometimes people talk about something that's going on in the news, but the real news is not necessarily what they're talking about, but what's implied by what's mm -hmm. going on. And mm. that's what worries me. A lot of people are worried, for example, like Facebook is going to be reading my messages. And most of the time, Facebook doesn't really care what your messages are. It does care, for example, what your interactions are. There's a video going around of somebody saying, hey, you know what? If you go into Facebook and you go into settings and then you go into privacy, there's one section called off Facebook activity. And when you click on that, you see that Facebook has uh, information that's being shared by other websites, such as uh, locally, a couple of banks, a couple of local banks are, are doing mm -hmm. that. And people are saying, oh, Facebook is sharing my bank. Uh, my bank is sharing my data with Facebook and whatever. It's not how much money you have in the bank or how much uh, you know money you transfer in and out or whatever. It's the fact that you are a c customer of that bank, for example. They can use that information to advertise to you better. And it, everything just revolves around advertising stuff to you. So, I mean, all those ads that you get, for example, for... Uh, electronic stores and that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about uh, that have pop up uh, because of the current situation mm. um, they're preying on that they're preying on the fact that Facebook knows so much about the interactions that you do not what you talk about it's it's too expensive to turn on everybody's microphone and recognize what they're talking about it's easier just to check what their browsing history is and every time you go into a website that has uh, a Facebook link or whatever, it, it, it just provides more and more information. And, and Facebook can get a much better picture of what they can sell to you. Not necessarily who you are or what you care about, just what you care about buying. And okay. uh, does, If you use a VPN, does that make mm, a difference? Not much. Because even if you're using a VPN, the only information that you would be disguising would be, for example your IP address. But I mean, if Facebook knows that you're logging into your uh, Panamanian bank, and then looking at a Panamanian newspaper, and then clicking on the Panamanian newspaper whose keywords for that article was, I don't know, sports, then you might be a candidate for uh, the next uh, football game that's going to be broadcast on Panamanian networks, because you're probably going to watch it, even though you're on a VPN. So unless you're on a VPN and you're not visiting any website that's related to you in any way and you're not using, uh, for example, uh, in private or incognito mode, then there's just so much information that can be kind of tied around you, if not traced directly to you, that it's, uh, it's not enough to use a VPN. Uh, some people, for example, will use... Um, uh, a USB stick that boots its own operating system with its own browser that uses the Tor or Onion router network. Uh, and still, there's stuff that if you're going to use that to log on to your bank mm -hmm. account and, and then go on to Facebook, definitely Facebook is going to know that you were there. So mm -hmm. uh, you have to be real careful and kind of hedge your bets on what the information uh, Facebook is going to use uh, to sell you stuff is, or you can just say, you know, uh, you know what, I'm not going to buy anything on impulse, uh, you know, when on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. And I, I, I would like to encourage people to be very careful about that. And the topic that I wanted to talk about today is that I've noticed that there are a lot of new uh, companies selling electronics here in Panama through Facebook mm -hmm. and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And there are two trends that I've noticed. Uh, the first one is that you see this store that has like 30,000 followers uh, that's selling, you know, the latest uh, gadget at a two for one sale or the latest video game console. And they say two year warranty or something like that. When you know the manufacturer only gives a one year warranty. I mean, those are all uh, weird signs, you know, a, a company uh, that has 30,000 followers all of a sudden. Well, I started looking around and poking around and looking at the images. And, and you know how you can reverse image search using 
Google or TinEye or several other uh, search engines. And uh, most of the images belong to stores in other places in Latin America. So they kind of pick Latin American stores. So the users receiving the items look Latin American and uh, they kind of, you know, uh, scam people in the sense that uh, people think, oh, it's an established uh, company with thousands of followers or whatever. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times you can go to the properties on those uh, pages or on those Instagram accounts and whatever and notice a couple of things. For example, that they change their name a lot. And that usually happens because they scam about a dozen people and then they change the name, they drop the phone number, they mm -hmm. only have like a, a WhatsApp to do business with, they ask you for a deposit and then they disappear. So in, in order for us to be a little bit more careful about all of this, I would recommend a couple of things. The first one is if you're going to buy something off of a company on Instagram or Facebook or whatever that's brand new, uh, especially if it's got thousands of followers or whatever, be careful because it could be a fake account. How can you tell? Well, for example, if they ask you for Western Union transfers or they ask you for, you know, send them uh, something by Yappy or Necky, just the phone number, and they're not in the commercial directory, they probably could be a scammer in the sense that when you apply for uh, existence in the Yappy commercial directory or the Necky commercial directory or you use uh, payment gateways such as Quanto.app or Pagelo Facil or, mm -hmm. or all of those, they do some diligence on you. They find out if you're a real company, if you're a real person, if you're doing business the right way and so on. So try to look for those, those signs of, you know, some legitimacy to the business. A storefront helps a lot as well. Mm -hmm. um, also, I would say um, if they only have like a, a WhatsApp or whatever, they don't have an actual phone number, then be careful. But the, the biggest one I would say is try to look for people who have purchased stuff there that you know. And if you have purchased on one of these uh, places or whatever, tell your friends, help a local business. That helps a lot, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to get uh, good prices. And if it's too good to be true or sounds too good to be true, it probably it is. is. Exactly. It probably yeah. is. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm with you. I mean, I would only uh, purchase from uh, what I consider to be well-established uh, local companies because, uh, and I've been very impressed. I mean, I have bought a number of items from a couple of the electronic companies here and found them to be spot on, efficient, uh, nothing funny going on. Um, so it's worked out really well. Before we carry on, I just want to make an announcement because people have been listening during the course of this morning. Then we've, got, we've got a giveaway. I'm going to ask a question at the top of the hour when we finish with Alex. It's a giveaway alert. And of course, it's our favorite season of the year. It's arrived and you can uh, uh, win a Sabor USA kit so that you can live the Verano con Sabor. Uh, participating is easy. Just uh, pop along, register at the SaborUSA.com.pa site. But also pay attention to what we've been saying, um, because we will be giving um, away uh, during the program. In fact, I'm going to be asking you questions instead at the top of the hour, and I'm going to want a correct answer to you. Now, I'll give you a bit of a clue. Just listen to what I have to say. Uh, the Flavor USA kit includes a bottle of Klein Simpadel wine, a boar's head delicatessen. That's a sausage. Um, Flavor USA bottle jacket, uh, exclusive Klein wine opener, and many more surprises. So uh, at the top of the hour, just before we go to the news, I'll be asking you a question. When we come back from the news, well, I'll see if we've got anybody that's won it. If not, I'll probably just keep it uh, for myself. You are listening to The Breakfast Show. We are chatting with Dr. Computer, Alex Newman. It is Thursday. Talking about all sorts of things. If you've got a question for uh, Dr. Computer, by the way, um, just uh, drop us a line to our WhatsApp number, 677-188-22, 677 one eight eight two two. Um, Alice, I just want to come back and we'll, we'll get back to this. I want to remember because I was quite intrigued by this um, this security sort of alert that iPhones are going to be given. In other words, a privacy alert. How's that going to work? Do you know? I'm not familiar with the details, but what I've heard so far is. A lot of these applications, not only Facebook, a lot of other applications, share your data with, uh, within themselves, with each other, with their partners, and so on. And uh, 
Apple's going to be a little tighter, which is uh, a little bit hypocritical because they also gather a lot of information <laughs> and share it with their partners. But they're going to be upfront about it, which is at least a good thing. It's, you know, kind of like a burglar going in and going like, hi, I'll be, I'll be your burglar today. My name is uh, uh, John, and I'm going to be burgling you this uh, evening. Thank you. Um, the thing is, they're going to be upfront uh, up about what information they collect and how they collect it and how they share it and so on. And a lot of these companies, not only Facebook, but a lot of uh, companies with apps and whatever, um, are not happy because they've relied on the fact that you don't read the whole terms and conditions when you click accept mm -hmm. to do things like gather information, uh, you know, about your interactions with the app and so on, which, you know, from the point of view of somebody who may be developing an app, I mean, for example, any of the electronic stores that you shop into, um, <clears throat> they might want to gather information about, you know, what times you use the app or when you use the app or, you know, what, what are you doing while you're using the app, which is not a bad thing per se, but they at least should tell you and give you the choice to say, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to share that or, you know, if you're going to ask me to share that in order to use the app, maybe I won't use the app. And they can decide if that is a good business decision for them or they can find that information elsewhere. I don't know. The thing is, it's all about informed consent and people should have the right to make informed consent uh, when it has to do with any of their information. Because, uh, again, as we've said before, information is power. It's not that they want the details of what you talk about, but the people you talk about, or the people you talk to and, and talk with, that tells a lot about you. So it should be handled carefully. Are we, um, I mean, are we, you know, you mentioned earlier on, and I'm, I'm, I'm one of the culprits. I do not bother reading uh, the terms and conditions because they've got pages and pages of small print terms up or whatever. So, you know, if, if there was ever a sort of issue, and I guess it went to, uh, uh, to arbitration or to court or whatever, we would be at fault because we didn't read them. Exactly. And unfortunately, that might be the case for a lot of things. But if our legislation, and this is, this is an important part, our legislation is very basic. The one that's uh, starting to become active in March 29 is very basic. So it doesn't necessarily protect us in all the ways that a GDPR, for example, from the EU uh, protects uh, e European citizens. But we do have a mechanism called la reglamentación de la ley, or mm -hmm. the way the law is implemented. So usually in Panama, for those who are not uh, familiar with uh, the process, when a law is created, you're expected, and again, I'm not a lawyer, so any lawyers out there who may want to correct me or improve the explanation, please do so. Um, so um, when the law is created, it sets out the basic tenets of the law, but then something called la reglamentación, which is the basic set of rules on how to implement that law, is where all the details are uh, done. So we can improve that a lot quicker than we can make a new law. Because making a new law means, you know, it has to go to the diputados and have to go mm -hmm. through three debates and so on. It's a very complicated process, and that's a good thing. Laws shouldn't be changed, like, every day or so. It's, it's not, not good. But the regulation uh, the, regarding that law should be at least as easy to change as necessary, especially in something like technology that changes pretty much every day. So... Uh, hopefully our uh, legislators and those in charge of creating the reglamentación uh, hmm. of the law uh, should do a good job of incorporating as many details as they can from the GDPR and even, you know, learn from their mistakes and uh, make our law better. And at least in a long time, uh, if not, it would be the first time, that one of our laws regarding technology is actually up to date and not 10 or 20 years behind. Mm -hmm. And what, what uh, we're looking at regulations, but as an individual, we talked earlier on about, say, using a VPN, which you said really isn't going to have a much, a much effect on the situation. 
Um, you talked about if we go on the web, use incognito. What is the best way that we can protect our data ourselves? I would say to be aware of what data we're sharing, when we're sharing it, why we're sharing it, who and who we're sharing it with. So it just, uh, unfortunately, it falls on the consumer to be more aware of these things, to read more about how it works and so on, um, to be safer. And for example, you mentioned a VPN. A VPN only will hide uh, the IP address that you are coming in from. But mm. if you then log on to your personal Facebook and then send me a message, Facebook knows that you and I are f uh, in some shape or form uh, related to each other, either by work or mm -hmm. by friendship or by whatever. So uh, you'd have to use like a, a fake name on Facebook or provide uh, disposable email email addresses when you're subscribing to things. But then that becomes one more thing to keep track of. I mean, what we've discussed, for example, in the past, that if you have a Gmail connected address, like uh, either uh, at gmail.com or your domain is being hosted by Google's G Suite, you can add the plus sign and any word you mm -hmm. want at the end, and it will still be your email address, but you'll have a way to filter it in case it falls into the wrong hands. For example, you could write me at Alex Newman plus The Breakfast Show at uh, gmail.com and that will arrive at Alex Newman at gmail.com's address. Now, if tomorrow I start receiving ads for little blue pills or whatever on that address, I can just block it and, you know, call you and say, hey, Jerry, somebody must have uh, had access to the email list that I subscribed or whatever. So that's that's another thing. And also when you get calls from, uh, you know, places like banks and financial institutions and whatever, uh, be very explicit about, you know, them, uh, you know, getting rid of your information if you don't want them to continue calling you and uh, make them understand on on social media, on, you know, on the phone call itself and so on, that you will not do business with companies that behave that way. Maybe mm -hmm. that'll send mm -hmm. the message. Okay. And um, tell, tell me, give me give me the way you do that email address again. Add a plus sign at the end of the original email address, but before the at sign. Okay. So Alex Newman at gmail.com becomes Alex Newman plus something else, whatever else at gmail.com. It will still arrive at my mailbox, but at least I'll know who I gave that address to. Mm -hmm. And I can filter using, uh, you know, uh, Google's rules to put it like in a folder or send it to the junk or whatever mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. any time. Okay, that's that's good info. Yeah, yeah. I know we mentioned it before, but I hadn't put it. I might, I'll put that on our website today. Awesome. So when you get when you get a reply, it'll come back with that that word on it. Plus, so exactly, uh, you can see where it's been sent to. Exactly. And okay. as I mentioned uh, previously, like you said, there's uh, somebody in Canada who was doing time because of that, because they sent me an email at company at Alex Newman plus company A at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And the guy was working at company B and company A knew that he had stolen their database, but they had no evidence. And with that email, they had evidence that he had actually stolen that and not gotten it from anywhere else. And uh, mm -hmm. Canada's laws are very similar to the ones in uh, the European Union. So they do take their data seriously, even more so than the United States, I would believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but we're fairly lax here. We don't have any sort of, I mean, you mentioned some legislation that uh, uh, could, could come out, but we don't have much protection here. Not at the time, but I hope that changes soon. Hmm. Okay. What what else is uh, what else? Any new gadgets coming out? By the way. Well, the Galaxy S twenty one from Samsung oh, yes, is coming yeah, out pretty out. soon. I had a chance to play with it for a couple of days, and I will be uploading my uh, review of it uh, on the website and on the social networks. Mm -hmm. But I can I can provide you with uh, some highlights. It's got an even better camera. That's kind of a given nowadays. Every every time they come out with something new, they come out with a better camera. Now, the S21 is curiously the first Galaxy S that supports the use of a 
S Pen even if you don't have a place to put it mm -hmm. in inside the phone. You will be able to purchase the S Pen with a special uh, case that looks like kind of like a checkbook or whatever with a corner where you can put the, put the, pen. the S Pen. Yeah. So if you're a fan of the Note but can't wait till September for the Note 21, then you can get an S21 right now. They drop the price a little bit. Um, it does come with a little bit less RAM, but uh, than the uh, than the Note that just came out a couple of months ago. But you don't really miss it because a lot of applications don't uh, use that much RAM nowadays. Uh, so it's 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 one of the ways that they've saved a, li a little on the price of the phone. Uh, the finish is very elegant, even though it's not full glass, you know, front and back mm -hmm. as it used to. It's not as practical, and a lot of people were getting the back glass uh, cracked and whatever. So, I think they've uh, they've got some of the best features of uh, both their mid range and their high range on this phone. It's got a much better zoom. It's got a better screen that refreshes up to I think 120 times per mm -hmm. second, so everything mm -hmm. looks smoother. But it's smart enough to know when it's not being refreshed so it takes up less power so if nothing's happening on the screen it's mm -hmm. only going to refresh it every second or so so it's pretty smart in that it has better battery life and uh also a much better processor so i think it's highly recommendable as a as a device goes you must ask you you know must ask the same questions we always do Alex. i mean they've only just bought out the s20 for heaven's sake why? You know, I mean, you're going to change your phone every 15, six months now or what? Well, the S20 came out in February of last year. Yeah, well, last year, that's nothing. <laughs> I mean, I'm using, I'm using a, a, I bought a new phone last year and I went back. I went back to the, um, I've got the Note 10. Why would I want to upgrade when this phone does everything I need? I mean, how you much better is the camera going to get, for heaven's sake? That is a, a valid point. I could tell you that uh, this phone and a lot of the flagship phones right now are meant for people who are producing content that's more of a visual nature and on the go, even mm -hmm. though, you know, for, for all the lockdowns and, and whatever, that's kind of uh, less nowadays. But it, it, it has been made for content production in the sense that it comes with this mode called director's mode where all of the cameras are recording video at the same time and you can switch scenes with the different cameras and then even post after you've uh you know filmed the video you can do camera switching on the video application itself on the phone so you can have like close-ups and macros and and zooms and wide angles and all of that and you could make so, much better so, videos with so it. So what kind of capacity is this phone? I mean, that is using an awful lot of A, battery. It's also using an awful lot of space. Because what I found now, like with my, I must admit, one of the, the downsides that I felt, not because I really, because I, I like it to be there, is that the uh, Note 10, why doesn't it have a, 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 a micro, you know, why can't you expand the memory? Because this seems to be a trend now that they're not, putting in the memory ex ex expansion well the s21 maxes out at 512 gigabytes of storage that does give you the chance to store several hours of 4k or 8k video uh, as it is so it shouldn't be that much of a problem unless you plan on keeping all of that video on the phone you can always offload that to say uh, amazon storage if you're a prime member google photos if you're a google member or Samsung's even uh, got a, their own cloud service, so you can offload it to that. But um, I, for one, remember, for example, going to CES a couple of times with a phone with either 64 gigs or 128 gigs of video and filming the entire day and mm -hmm. not occupying uh, more than a couple of dozen gigabytes, which I then just offload to my home server or my home NAS or an external hard drive because I know I'm going to need the space for the day after. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons that I'm guessing uh, some manufacturers, including Samsung, might not necessarily add a storage uh, options such as a micro SD or whatever, 
is because with 4k and 8k video unless the the storage is on die right there on the motherboard you will have some sort of a bottleneck and you won't be able to uh, to uh, record all of that video content at the same time on a single piece of flash unless it's a very expensive one and if you can afford that expensive one you're probably going to use a pro camera anyway so mm. it's it's kind of a i would say they're 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 kind of uh knowing what their core demographic wants and then giving them that all right well very quickly Alex, price of the s21 oh it's uh around let me see uh i haven't uh, i don't have the local pricing information but it's gonna hover around the thousand dollar mark so let's see when it comes uh officially out what the prices are um and i think you can also pre-order it in the samsung store right now so go ahead and uh, look for the samsung store in, in panama and check out the prices they've got the ultra the pro and the regular s21 and they're all pretty nice all right well as always alex thank you uh, uh, so very much it's been You're welcome. and uh, we'll put information put a link to you as well on our website today which thank is uh, the breakfast show.com.pa and always good to have you with us, Alex. Missed you last week, but uh, you have to earn a living, I suppose. Or at least pretend to. Uh, I know the feeling. <laughs> Dr. Computer, Alex Newman with us here on this morning's...